Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn and this is Traditional Woodworking by Hand. And in today's episode, we continue our perusal of traditional woodworking hand tools and we're going to be talking about measuring and marking. So we're at the stage in our perusal of traditional woodworking hand tools where we're going to be talking about setting out tools. And the first part of this is all about all those different ways that we can use to mark the workpiece. It may seem quite simple, but you'd be surprised how involved it can be. Um, the first thing I'd like to point out that is that if you go to Lumbyards, very frequently they'll give you one of these. This is known as a carpenter's pencil, and it's typically broader than it's, it's wide. And when you sharpen it, it ends up with a really big point that, in my opinion, is actually too inexact even for carpenters. But for fine woodworking, this doesn't work at all. So forget one of these. At, at the least, you need a pencil. Now, I don't particularly like pencils because they're made of lead and I don't want the lead marking the wood. It's sometimes hard to get rid of that. I also don't want the lead getting in the way of my really sharp blades, but sometimes it helps, especially if you're going to be removing the mark completely. You can get a B type of pencil, which gives you a nice fat mark but it's probably too fat and it's hard to get rid of. Or you can get an H, which is much harder. For my money, I prefer an HB pencil. So I have one here. And if you look very closely, you'll see that I've sharpened the point so that it is very flat on one side. What that allows me to do is to make a mark, assuming I'm making a mark with a tri-square. I can hold the tri-square on the wood like this and I can hold the pencil so that the flat part is right against here and tilting it I can make a pretty fine line okay so that's one way of doing it I could also um, if I were just like roughly marking things use a piece of chalk and that's what a lot of old cabinet makers do and in fact that's if you take an old piece of furniture apart and you look at it's part of it that you don't normally see, like the underneath of a drawer or the inside of a cupboard. You'll very often, if the piece is like 100 or 200 years old, you'll see the original chalk marks that the cabinet makers used. Chalk is much better than lead because it's more easily got rid of. It can absorb the stain and everything. So if you really have to make a mark, use chalk rather than the pencil. But best of all is if you use some kind of sharp point. Now, here is a long marking gauge, and its length is really convenient if I have to mark around a lot of shaped, curved spaces, but it also comes to a very sharp point, which I keep protected when it's in my toolbox by keeping it in the end of a piece of cork. What this does is enable me to Put the, thing, the, the point at an angle and I can make a line all the way across a piece of wood, right? Now I have a line that if I'm going to saw it, I would want to remove one side so that there's a gap, but I have a line that's really pretty exact. Uh, a slight difference to one of those is a regular marking gauge. This is if I really am not going to saw to that line or chisel to that line. I just want to make the mark, and this makes a much deeper mark. And you can see it's not particularly straight or clean, but it's a good way of making a mark. Now, at the end of the 19th century, when schools began to be more universal for the general public, and one of the things that they used to teach, especially the working classes, was woodworking. There was a gentleman by the name of Mr. Sloyd who invented the Sloyd knife. And for years and years and years, the Sloyd knife was the tool used for marking things. 
right? I think you can actually see if you look on here that it says sloid. Now, this is all right, providing that when you use it, you remember to hold it at an angle because it's beveled on both sides. And if I were to use it upright, the deeper I go, the more the sides of the mark expand. So the secret, if you want to use a sloyd knife, is to hold it in at an angle like this. And the other advantage of this is that if this were now a line that I was going to saw, I could now come, and this was the waist, I could come down here and I could cut out a V-groove so that there'd be something for the saw to ride in and it would only be sawing up to the line. However, the world changes and moves on. And nowadays, my preferred method of marking is to use, and I don't use very many of these tools, is to use a Japanese marking knife. And what's special about this is that it, unlike the Sloyd knife, it only has a single bevel. So assuming that, once again, if this were the waist, and I wanted to scribe a line down here, I would use it so that the straight side was against the square. And then, no matter how many times I do this, no matter how deep I go, the good side of the wood is going to remain perfectly vertical, and it's the waist side which is going to get a little larger, giving me a nice guide for my saw. Now, these come just as a blade. I happen to have taken a scrap piece of wood, sawn it in half, made a space for the knife, and glued it together, and I'm careful always to keep the knife with its case like that in my toolbox so it doesn't get blunted. Now, there are a couple of other things that you can do. Here is a pair of winding sticks, which we'll talk about in subsequent issues. But these are also good for marking. But one of the things that you have to be sure about is that, in fact, they are square. They are straight. So one way is to put them together like this and hold them up to the light. And you shouldn't, if they're really perfectly square, perfectly straight, you shouldn't be able to see any light between the two pieces. A second way of testing the truth of one of these straight edges is to put it on a piece of wood, draw a line, and then flip the wood over. It can be a winding stick or it can be a, any other piece of wood that you're using, and draw another line. And if those two lines coincide perfectly, then you know this edge is straight. You've got something good to mark with. Another method of marking is to use a chalk line. This is especially good if you have to mark a long length, like this board, for example. And I want a straight line from here to here. So I use a chalk line. I hook one end over the nail here. I bring this down. And there are two secrets for this to work well. The first is that the line should be taut. Right? So I'm going to wrap it around here like that, and it's taut. The second is that when I pick the line up, I should pick it up vertically rather than at an angle. That way, it will make a mark directly on the wood. Watch. Now you can see a perfectly straight line. Chalk lines can be very useful, and as you can see, they can go up to Hmm, up to 50 feet, depending on how much you have in there. So they tend not to be terribly useful for cabinet work or furniture making, but it's a useful thing to bear in mind. A couple of last things I want to mention is, first of all, a pinch sticks. If I want to measure something, say some interior measurement, it can be hard with a tape or a rule or something like this to get that. But a pair of so-called pinch sticks where the ends are beveled over so they fit in like this. Now, if I hold these two pieces together, 
now I have the exact distance from here to here, which is the same as the distance from here to here. And by the way, the use of pinch sticks like this is a very convenient way for making sure that something is square. Because if I've measured this carefully, and the, exactly the same measurement is true for the other side, which in this case it isn't, I know that this is perfectly rectangular. So bear in mind pinch sticks. These, in fact, are probably more useful for larger things like that. One last thing is the almost universal fourfold two foot rule, or as they mostly are in Britain now, uh, meter rules. Uh, I just want to show you one little trick about this. If I wanted, say I had this piece of wood here, and I wanted to divide this piece of wood, and it measures from here to the rebate, it measures five inches. If I wanted to divide that into half or three equal sections, then I might get a little lost trying to divide five by three or whatever. But if I do this and keep one tip on there and I get the six inch mark on here, now with my pencil, I can mark the two inch and I can mark the four inch and I've divided the piece of wood into three equal sections, which just for the sake of looking at it, let's see what those measurements are. And that would have been one and three quarters, oh, one and three quarters less a sixteenth. That would have been a hard thing to measure by hand, but that's a useful trick to remember when you're using one of these. So hopefully learning about some of these marking tools all the way from knives and bread oils and uh, rules and whatnot. Um, hope that will help you in your setting out. If you want to know more about that, then of course you should look at the whole chapter that I've written in this book about measuring and marking tools. As I've mentioned before, this book is available from my website where you can buy it online. Uh, and of course, you can always ask lots of questions. Don't forget to hit the, uh, hit the subscribe button so we come back and learn more. And I hope you have a lot of success with your project.